All right, so the next section is the electrical section. This is where you set up and define the electrical system of the aircraft. Uh, the first bit of stuff is pretty straightforward. However, this bit down here is the part that most people, most developers mess up because uh, some, some developers leave this out entirely. Uh, but we'll go through it, don't worry. This is actually a lot easier than it looks. So starting from the top, we have max battery voltage. This is the voltage that the battery has, the maximum that it can have, the maximum it will be charged to, and this is also how much juice the battery will have when the plane spawns. It will always spawn at max voltage. Next one is generator alternate voltage. This is how many, uh, how many volts can the generator kick out. Now, I'll give you a brief example. On the Cessna Skyhawk, you have a 24 volt battery but the electrical system is 28 volts and the alternator kicks out 28 volts. And the reason for that is so you will always have a charge available. And that's how most airplanes, I think, are. The alternator generator does more voltage than the actual battery supply. Now, unfortunately, FSX and ESP Sims do not have the ability to specify a second battery. Like uh, some models of Cessna Skyhawks have both a standby battery and a main battery, like the, uh, the 172 SP that I flew in real life had two batteries. It had standby and main. So unfortunately, you can't specify a backup battery. So dovetail Lockheed, hello. <laughs> anyway, max alternator voltage, that's for the generator. Max generator alternator amps. Now this one is important. We'll talk about why it's important later, but this here is how many amps the generator kicks out or alternator. The next one is engine generator map equals a set of numbers. Now, I will like to say, some developers don't put all this. They just define these three and then call it a day. But you really need to define stuff like this. Because, back to our assumed defaults. If you don't define it, then Flight Sim will default it. And your plane won't be as realistic as it could be. So, this is basically a map. And... We map out the engines starting with zero through three, and if it's we set it to zero if we want that engine to have a generator, and one if or set it to zero if we don't want it to have an alternator or generator, and set it to one if we do. So there's one engine on this plane, engine zero, and that is that one's configured for a generator. All other engines save zero because there are no other engines. So that's how that works. Now, electricity always available. This is a flag that's sort of a cheat option, and I recommend turning this one on when you're developing a new plane or testing one. And that will make it so that you always have electricity available. Even if you run the battery dead, you will still have electricity. So this, this bit down here, this is the electrical system mapping. What you're doing is you're defining components of the electrical system, and then you, this first number, so here's our component, flat motor. The first number is the bus type. Which bus is this component connected to? The second number is the max amp load, which is how many amps does that component draw when it's on? And the last number is the minimum voltage from the electrical system or the bus that is needed for the component to function. So our flat motor is on bus zero, it draws 10 amps when it's on and needs 17 volts. Now I've gone through this and mapped out everything realistically and I've also included all the components that FSX will let you have. You won't, it won't let you compone or have everything on here but you can, you can assign most of your components. So this can get a little bit tricksy, especially if you don't know how electrical systems work. So this first number, let's talk about that, buses. What is a bus? A bus is part of the electrical system. If I bring up the caravan's electrical system real quick, these big black bars are the buses. And you can think of them as just metal rods that different components are connected to. And the POH, again, is a good resource to have because it shows you how the electrical system is connected. So we see here uh, strobe light, beacon light, wing ice light. They're all connected to bus one. Now, we can't really do the same thing in FSX because it only supports a few buses. Let's go through them. Bus type zero is the main bus. 
Bus type one is the avionics bus. Bus type two is the battery bus. Bus type three is the hot battery bus. And bus types four through seven are the generator or alternator of the respective engines, i.e. engine four is engine zero, engine five, or, uh, or bus four is engine zero, and then bus five is engine one, and so on, where bus seven is your last engine, engine four. So this basically says which part of the electrical system needs to be active in order for a particular component to work. Now, real quick, main battery bus. That means the main battery has to be on in order for the component to function. The avionics bus means that the avionics bus, the avionics needs to be turned on. That switch needs to be pushed in order for the component to function. Now, battery bus, under most circumstances, is the same as main bus. There is a difference, however. We'll talk about APUs in a second, but when the APU is powered on, the APU only provides power to the main bus. So only components that are on bus zero get power from the APU. Now, the hot battery bus. The hot battery bus is the same as the main and the battery bus, except they don't have a switch. They Anything on the hot battery bus is always hot. It is always drawing power. It is always on. And of course, the engine generator stuff, that is, um, if the if the respective generator is not on, then that component won't work. So let's go through our flap motor here. We've assigned it to bus zero, meaning the main bus, meaning the battery switch needs to be on, and it draws 10 amps. Now, there was a misconception a while back. Some people think that this does not work. No matter what you put in here, it, the sim just doesn't take it into account. That is not true. I have tested this numerous times. If you put the correct information in there, it does work. Here's two pictures to prove it. The picture on the left is the Coronado 208 before I made modifications to the electrical system in the CFG, and the one on the right is after it. Both pictures are with the aircraft powered on with um, the with a, an APU on, I think, I can't remember, and they've turned on all the lights, all the anti-icing, all the avionics, and so on. Everything's powered up, and as you can see, the picture on the right has a much higher amp load than the picture on the left. So it does actually work. Now, some of these components aren't on all the time. Obviously, a light is going to be on as long as that light switch is flipped on, right? But the flap motor is only on when you actually move the flaps. So for a time, when that motor is on, it's going to be drawing 10 amps. Now, this ties into your alternator thing. Your battery has a fixed amount of power, and the more power you take from it, the less power it has. Your generator alternator can replenish the battery, but it also runs the electrical system when it's running. So let's say you have 200 amps. I turn on the flap motor, and for the duration that it's on, it's going to draw 10 amps, I think, per second. It just draws 10 amps, all right? So now I have 190 amps. Now, if if the battery, if the engines are running, that 190 amps is going to be replenished pretty quickly. But if it's not, I now have less juice to work with. So this is important to make sure you map this stuff out. And ideally, you want to have a generator that puts out more amperage than your electrical system could possibly consume. You might not always be able to. Now, one of the reasons you want to do this is because if you're pulling more amps than the generator or alternator can kick out. Now, this applies to each generator or alternator on the plane, by the way. So this might be a bit dangerous for engines uh, or air, single engine aircraft. But for multi-engine aircraft, this isn't usually a problem if both engines have a generator alternator. So what happens if, if the alternator can't make up the charge? Well, it's not that the component won't work. It's just it's going to take power from the battery then. And you might not have enough power to run it from the battery. If the battery gets run low, obviously it dies. Now keep in mind, each of these components is capable of failing. Also, your electrical system or alternator or even the battery is capable of failing. So when you map this out correctly, you make it so that the end user needs to pay attention to their electrical system just like a real pilot. So 
it's vitally important you get this stuff right. Now, if you don't have access to the correct information, you can sort of wing it. Just use your brain. Obviously, something like a motor is going to have a decent amount of amperage to power it. Something like a light might have lower power requirements, unless it's a really bright light, like a landing light. As you can see, the landing light here pulls 10 amps. Something like prop sync might require a decent amount of power, whereas a hydraulic pump won't. Just use your brain, really. So let me go through this. Flat motor I've attached to the main bus. It draws 10 amps when active and needs 17 volts. Now that last one, the 17 volt requirement, if the battery, if the electrical system is not capable of producing at least that many volts, the component simply won't work. So we need to make sure our electrical system can produce the volts. Now also, this both of these are actually attached to the bus that they're currently on. So you wanna make sure, this is more important with avionics, but you wanna make sure that there's enough amperage on that bus to power the component. Gear motor is on bus zero, autopilot is on bus one, so it's on avionics. Now a bit about avionics. You see that the avionics bus is mentioned here and we also have a separate avionics so we have avionics bus is attached to the main bus but the avionics themselves are attached to the avionics bus let me bring back up the pdf real quick uh, let me see here's the avionics bus and as you can see it receives power from somewhere up here to avionics bus so it receives power from if you map this backwards, a battery bus. So our main battery bus flips on, powers through a battery connector to a shunt that powers a, a distribution bus that then goes to power the avionics bus here. And we're recreating that. We're deciding which, which one of the things the avionics bus gets juice from. Don't recommend putting this on bus type 3, the hot battery bus, because again, that means your avionics will always be on, always drawing power, and the avionics bus can draw a decent amount of power. Now, one other thing to note. Take a look at everything you attach to the avionics bus. In this case, autopilot, avionics, marker beacon. I also have directional gyro slaving is tied to the avionics bus as well. You need to tally up their amperage. So we have two amps here. Let's start from the top. Autopilot needs five amps. Avionics need five amps. Marker beacon needs an additional two, so that's 12. And directional gyro needs another two, so that's 14. So when all the avionics are on, it needs 14 amps. However, I've only got 10 amps on the avionics bus. I need to increase that because that means the avionics bus is not capable of powering all of the components. So it's gonna have a higher draw if I flip any of these components on and the bus isn't capable of powering them. Or they may not work at all, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm gonna go ahead and increase that to 15 because I need at least 14 volts to or 14 amps to power everything on the, uh, on the um, avionics bus if everything's on but only had 10 available. So let's go ahead and increase that to 15. That means whenever the avionics bus is on, it's gonna pull 15 amps. So that means a higher power draw for the, um, the electrical system. And you know, all of these are pretty self-explanatory and you can get them from the POH or the training manual or maintenance manual of the chosen aircraft. And just sort of use your head if you don't have access to that. Obviously, pitot heat should draw a decent amount of power, especially the, if there's more pitot tubes on the plane. You know, a Cessna 172 only has one pitot tube, four amps would make sense, but if the plane's got two pitot tubes, which I think the caravan does, then eight amps would make more sense. Or maybe it uses a more efficient pitot tube and only needs six amps. You know, that kind of thing. Now, I don't know what additional system powers. I'm really not sure. I think it may power certain components like uh, hydraulic and stuff like that. Actually, doesn't that have an electrical thing on it? Yeah, it does. So, yeah. Now this is gonna. So real, I don't know what that. This is all. This is all gonna tie into the stuff down below. And I'm gonna give you a brief preview. 
The hydraulic system, we can define the normal pressure, whether or not there's electrical pumps and whether or not there's engine pumps and which engine has the pumps. So if we want there to be electrical pumps, we would set this to one. But we also need to have this part up here so that it knows how much power the pump draws. You see how that all connects together? And that applies for multiple systems. So that's the electrical system. It's pretty straightforward once you break it down. Now the last thing I want to talk about is this section right here, auxiliary power unit. This was discovered by someone on FS Developer because this is actually not mentioned in the SDK. What is the auxiliary power unit? The auxiliary power unit is basically a turbine engine in the back of the most of some airplanes that provides electrical power and hydraulic pressure and sometimes bleed air in real life. Now in flight sim it will provide electrical power, bleed air, hydraulic pressure, and vacuum pressure to the aircraft and you can turn it on using a set of key commands or some switches in, a, in the cockpit. That, that allows you to have the plane sit on the ground without running the battery down, which was a bit of a problem for FS9. Air, for FS9. In fact, such a big problem that FSUIPC and other add-ons even came up to replace that. There's even a payware add-on called BAT-X that fixes, that does, that keeps the battery from dying. Which is really, really silly when, here's the solution right here. If you put this section in any CFG file, it will command the aircraft to have an auxiliary power unit. The problem was only aircraft with jet engines, engine type 2, had, or engine type, yeah, engine type 1, sorry, had the APU. So that meant turboprops didn't have it, helicopters or pistons didn't have it, but this section will force the sim to give the aircraft an auxiliary power unit. Now, why would we do that? Why would a caravan or a Skyhawk or anything have an APU? Well, they wouldn't, but they do have a receptacle for a GPU. So what you can do is put this section in your CFG file and then have the end user assign some key commands to the APU. I use Control A, Control Shift A, and Shift A to control it. And effectively, you give any airplane in the sim a ground power unit. That feature has been there since day one of FSX. And there's too many developers out there that don't use it. Now, Coronado actually screwed up big time because some of their planes, I believe the Beach 350i and the C90 GTX had a feature in them called an external power switch where you flip it and you would think that would provide juice to the plane, except it didn't. The battery would still eventually die. But the second you added this section, like magic, that switch worked and the battery wouldn't die. So even payware devs screw this up. They put that switch there with the necessary components to make it function as an APU, but forgot to put this section in the CFG file. Shame on you, Coronado. And that's the electrical system. So, yeah. It's pretty straightforward once you start reading it. The only confusing part is this down here. So, yep, on to the other systems.